This is the award-winning Ernest Angley Hour, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to all nations. I believe in miracles because I believe in God. As you watch today's program, reach out in faith and allow the Lord to minister to your personal needs. You can have a miracle. And here is God's man for this hour, Reverend Ernest Angley. Greetings in the name of the Lord and welcome to the Ernest Angley Hour. I'm the Reverend Chris Mockamer. I'm an associate pastor at Ernest Angley's Grace Cathedral and I will be your guest host for the program today. We have much in store for you throughout the program. Good gospel music and singing, a powerful message by the Reverend Ernest Angley and Kathy Millar will be on the program sharing with you great testimonies of how God is working all around the world through this Jesus ministry. But first, it's Angels Grace Cathedral Choir. Will you carry my cross, child? carry my cross will you carry my cross child will you carry my cross will you carry my Cross to the lost and dying. Yes, Lord, I'm gonna carry your cross. Will you carry my cross to the lost and dying? Yes, Lord, I'm gonna carry your cross. Will you carry my love? Will you carry my yes, faith? Lord. Will you carry my power to the human race? Yes, Will you carry my peace? Will you carry my yes, joy Lord. to every man and woman, girl and boy? Oh, yes. Deep 
and he'll do it for you. I've been thrown into the fiery furnace because I would not bow with the devil's crowd. They heated the fire seven times hotter, but I could not burn. The devil tried to bind my hands and my feet. They thought they had defeated me, but God let all my enemies see. Jesus walks with me. He's brought me through. He's brought me through the deepest valley. Through the valley, he's brought me. He's brought me through life's troubles and cares. Raging, storming seas Jesus brought me through And he'll do it for you I've been thrown into the lion's den Lions all around me again and again Because I would not compromise With family or friends But I was happy as could be Those old lions couldn't bother me If God would open your eyes You'd see there's angels with me He's brought me through He's brought me through Jesus brought me through the deepest valley. Through the valley, brought me. He's brought me through life's troubles and cares. He's brought me through life's raging, storming seas. Jesus brought me through and He'll do it for you. Jesus brought me. He's brought me through the deepest valley. He's faithful and true. been betrayed by family and friends, loved ones that I thought would stay till the end, but I've started out for heaven and I'm going through, and I don't care what they may say, blah, 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 you can go or you can stay, but I'm going through, he's brought me through, he's brought me through, the deepest valley, through the valley, brought me, he's brought me through, life's troubles and And you in television land, radio land, get pen and paper because I'll give you a lot of scriptures. The people here, many of them are taking them down. The teaching tonight, every secret thing rewarded. Every secret thing rewarded. R-E-W-A-R-D-E-D. The Bible makes it very clear that every secret thing done is no secret with God. He sees all and reward all. Reward, what does it mean? It simply means something received in return for good or evil. A consequence that happens to someone as a result of worthy or unworthy behavior. Keep these things in mind. Nothing remains hidden from God. He has the power to bring all things to light. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Isn't that something? For God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing, whether it is good or bad, or whether it is evil, everyone's secrets will be brought to trial. They will not remain a secret. Luke chapter 8, verse 17. 
for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Means people will know about it. It's going to be brought out on judgment day. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Daniel chapter 2, verse 22. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. He knows all about what those are doing in the darkness. And he's going to reward them for their evil ways. Psalms 90 verse 8, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy face or countenance. In the light of thy face, you may keep secrets from man, but every deed done in secret, every willful meditation of your heart is seen by God and will be rewarded by him. He sees every fervent prayer you pray in secret and he will reward you openly with answered prayer. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. But thou, when thy prayest, enter into the closet. When thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. That's beautiful too. But that doesn't mean that people won't know you're praying. James chapter 5, verse 16. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much. I like that scripture. God took notice of the prayers of Cornelius, a man who feared God but did not have the full gospel taught to him. He was a Roman centurion, and it was not lawful for the disciples who were Jews to go into their homes. But Cornelius wanted truth. And as he prayed and fasted in the privacy of his own home, God sent an angel and told him what to do. God rewarded those secret prayers and fasting that he had done and brought the fullness of Christ to his house. God's like that. If you want truth, he'll see that you get it. Acts chapter 10, verses 30, 31. And Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house, and behold, a man, an angel it was, stood before me in bright clothing. Now he was, Cornelius wasn't used to this, and said, Cornelius, called him by name, thy prayer is heard. Thy alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Acts. 10th chapter, verse 5. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Acts 10th chapter, verses 44 through 46. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they are the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles, 
also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. The Holy Ghost had really come and had really taken over and was speaking in another tongue, magnifying God. On the other hand, if you do not fear God and you harbor secret sin in your heart, God sees that sin. He does not hear your prayer. They do not come up before him like the prayers of Cornelius did. Psalms 66 chapter, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That's something. Isaiah chapter 59. This is one of the great, great prophets of the Old Testament. Chapter 59, verse 1 and verse 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot say, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, your sins, have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. This is plain talk. It's gospel truth and Bible truth and easy to understand. When one prays with a secret desire to be heard of men or to impress men rather than God, God sees that hypocrisy and he cannot reward them with answered prayer. They already have their reward. That hypocrisy, God doesn't reward it good, never. Matthew chapter six, verse five. When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues, in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Fairly I say unto you, they have their reward. In fasting, God sees every secret meal you fast, and he will reward you openly. Matthew 6, chapter 6, verse 13, 17. Matthew chapter 6, verse 17 and 18. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And you don't proclaim to everybody you're fasting. And I fast many fasts of 40 days, not eating any, not a bite of food. And I'd lose a lot of pounds and people would begin to notice it. Began to notice that I, I was losing so much that I couldn't hide it any longer. But I didn't do it for people to see. No, I sh would fast shorter fast, but I'd call the fast of 40 days a divine fa fast. Jesus fasted 40 days. He drank water. Any good medical doctor can tell you fasting is good for you if you drink plenty of water. How does God reward a true fast? Isaiah 58 chapter verses 6, 8, and 9. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Isn't that rich? And thine health 
shall spring forth speedily fast and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shall thou call and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, here I am. Here I am. And he told me to tell you, I am as sinners. I am as sinless to the world in this final hour. You tell the people, I am as sinless. And we're taking Jesus to the whole world. And then we're to finish up the work that Jesus was doing when he was here. We're in step with him. We're in love with him. And if we have the favor of him and we are treasured by the Lord just like he treasured his only begotten son, we're sons and daughters of his. And he, you're calling to him and he tells you, here I am. This is the great God of the universe, of the whole world. Those who fast merely to appear unto men to fast, God sees their heart. He cannot reward them with his glory. He cannot break every yoke because that is not what they're after. Jesus said they already have their reward. And the reward is simply that man see them fast. What a sad, empty reward that is. That's awful. That's terrible. As far as giving in secret, when the widow woman gave two mites to the Lord, the treasury of sheep secretly gave everything. She didn't tell people she was giving everything. No one but Jesus knew that she gave all her living. And it was something. Maybe you think you don't have much to give to God, but you give it anyway. God sees it and he rewards you for it. Maybe you give a lot of money, but you do it secretly so certain people won't find out about it. God sees it and he will reward you openly in many ways spiritually, physically, and financially. But you don't give it for a purpose of people knowing. But to line up and give, that's fine. To make your pledges, that's wonderful. The Bible says, rightly dividing the word of truth. We have to know what the Lord's talking about. And he'll teach it to you. He's taught it to me. I'm human just like you are. And people have gotten off in fanaticism or modernism by not knowing what God meant. And they take a phrase and make a doctrine out of it. No. No one scripture, the Bible tells us, is of a private interpretation. Can't build a doctrine on just one scripture. It won't work. And so God certainly knows how to bless you, and He's blessing you openly. And you give, people see you give it, it inspires them to give. They know you're being blessed, that helps them. Luke, this is a great chapter chapter 6 verse 38 give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure measure you meet with all it shall be measured to you again and that's happened to you hasn't it 
Hasn't that happened? Sure it has. You gave, and the Lord measured it back to you in many ways, in many ways. You know, he made the Israelites' clothes last, made their sandals last. Those 40 years in the wilderness, that's something. He fed them on manna from heaven. That was something. Think about wearing clothes that didn't wear out. Well, your tires will last longer. In so many ways, he's blessing you. You don't even realize it. Your tires maybe wouldn't last that long at all. But God can make whatever last. You, get, you memorize this scripture, how the Lord measures. He moves on people. And it's wonderful how he blesses them. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now, prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, that there may be meat in mine house. And that's wonderful. We pay our bills. God moves on you to pay your tithes, give your offerings, and we pay our bills. People love to do business with us. We have the name of paying our bills. I'm a preacher, but I'm a businessman too. And God has made me a good businessman. And I appreciate it. And I thank him so much. And I've proved him over and over. He asked us to do it. If I will not open the windows of heaven. Now that's something. Have you ever thought about how big one of those windows are? Have you? Why, he can just cover you up really good, open on one window, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. This is Bible I'm teaching you, the truth I'm teaching you. We believe it, don't we? Every secret thing rewarded. Friend, that was a great message by the Reverend Ernest Angley. Now be sure and tune in next week for the conclusion. But I want to take this opportunity to invite you to be a soul winner for Jesus by sponsoring Reverend Angley's mighty miracle crusade that's coming up in South Africa. Oh, we're expecting a mighty harvest of souls, the greatest miracle crusade of this entire ministry to date. Yes, God will be moving to save people, deliver people, and fill them with the good Holy Ghost. You may not be able to go with Reverend Angley personally, but by sponsoring the Crusades, it's the same as if you were there helping those people to come to Jesus, helping to reap that mighty harvest of souls that will take place. Friend, these crusade services cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, but it's worth it for the many souls that come to the Lord. Do send in whatever the Lord lays upon your heart, and God will bless you for it. And remember, if you send in $100 or more, then we will send you a DVD of all the highlights of the seven crusade services that will take place. And oh, what a blessing that will be to you and yours. Our mailing address is Ernest Angley Ministries, P.O. Box 1790, Akron, Ohio, 44309. Our mailing address in Canada is Ernest Angley Ministries, Box 970, Station U, Toronto, Ontario, M8Z5P9. You can also contact us and donate through our website, ernestangely.org. And you can always call our 24-hour prayer line as well. Remember, we do accept all major credit cards. And partners of this Jesus ministry do read 
the February letter Reverend Angley has sent to you. The theme of this letter is God's promises are all true, and indeed they are. This letter will inspire you to continue to lean on Jesus. And don't forget, each month that you sponsor this Jesus Worldwide Outreach Ministry, you get a new Book of the Month. And the February Book of the Month is What It Means to Blaspheme Against the Holy Ghost. Oh, this is a powerful, sober teaching, all according to the Word of God. Now request gift offer P328 when you send in your support for the month of February. And friend, right now we have something very special for you. It's a video about the Ernest Angley World Radio app. Think about it, friend, 24-7. You can tune in and listen to good gospel music and singing, great preaching by the Reverend Ernest Angley, powerful testimonies of what God is doing through this Jesus ministry. Now watch. Ernest Angley World Radio is a powerful internet radio that streams God's love and greatness 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You don't need a traditional radio, just your laptop, tablet, or smartphone. And you can download our free apps from our website at ernestangeli.org. When troubles push in on you, then tune into sermons. I accuse Christianity for having ministers that will deny what God has promised us. Songs. I'm going to join the angels band. I'll sing with the angels in glory band. And personal testimonies that build faith and joy. They were drugs of mental addiction, physical addiction. Instantly, Reverend Angley, I was delivered from those devils that bound my life. Praise the Lord, that's good. Also, go to ernestangeley.org and visit the worship center and see life-changing miracles. Come on! <laughs> Receive personal prayer from Reverend Angeley. There's the healing hands like no other hand. And sign up as an online ministry partner and receive free downloads. Dip your cup in God's river of love and never be the same. In the resurrection morning when the trump of God shall sound, we shall rise. Hallelujah, we shall rise. We shall rise. And the saints will come rejoicing, and no tears will e'er be found. We shall rise, hallelujah, we shall rise. In the resurrection morning, what a meaning it will be. We shall rise, hallelujah, we shall rise. We shall rise, when our fathers and our mothers and our loved ones we shall see. We shall rise, hallelujah, we shall rise. We shall rise. Hallelujah. We shall rise. Amen. We shall rise. We shall rise in the resurrection morning when death's prison bars are broken. We shall rise. We shall rise. We shall rise. We shall rise. In the resurrection morning, blessed thought it is to be. Sky. Up in the sky, high. we shall rise, we shall rise in 
friend, I hope you enjoyed that great number. Well, I have a special guest with me. It's Kathy Millar with the Voice of Foreign Missions. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you for having me here today. What do you have for us? I have some wonderful letters that have come in from different parts of the world. And I'd like to start off with a person who is writing from Zambia, Central Africa. And they write, Dear Reverend Angeli, I greet you all in the blood name of Jesus. I wrote to you some time ago about my son who had seizures and was on treatments that were not helping. And I had tuberculosis. And after completing the treatments, I still had a persisting cough. After I received the bless cloths, I did as you instructed and pinned one bless cloth on my son's clothing. The frequent appointments that he had with the doctor reduced because the seizures had reduced. Praise so God. So God started moving and working. And now, praise God, after many months, he has not had any seizures. Isn't and that that's wonderful? a wonderful healing. Yes. You know, there are miracles and there are healings. A miracle is instantaneous. Healing, sometimes it takes a while for the complete deliverance to manifest. Yes. And that's wonderful that he's now set free from that. Oh, yes. And with seizure, seizures, many times they don't know when they're going to come on. They can be anywhere. And just all of a sudden it takes them over. And that can be such a bondage, yes. not only to the individual, but the family as yes, well. Yes, absolutely. Well, God did it. He took care of them. And the gentleman goes on to say, my son is well and very active. And I thank God because he is able. Praise the Lord. I also received my miracle for TB. Even when my coffin became worse, God gave me a stubborn faith to hold on. And today I am healed. That's great. Yes. And so many are afflicted in third world nations with TB, but yes. God has the cure. Yes, it's so easy to, you know, contract that, that sickness and mm -hmm. disease because it's airborne. That's right. So, but God, he can heal anything. He can and he does. Yes, absolutely. He says, these are two great testimonies that have happened in our family. I am the Lord's witness and I thank God for you and your ministry. God is using you to save people's lives worldwide, your sister in the Lord. Well, that's wonderful. Well, here we have a letter from a man writing from Kenya, East Africa, and he writes, Dear Reverend Angeli, receive warm greetings in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First and foremost, thank you for sending me the power of the Holy Ghost magazine and the blessed cloth. The magazine has been a great blessing to me because people across the globe are giving wonderful testimonies and victory over Satan. In fact, this proves that God's love and mercy has no boundaries and all things are possible with him. For the blessed cloth you sent me, it has transformed my life. I was suffering with a severe acute burning sensation on my back along my spine. The doctors did their best to treat me, but my disease was unknown to them for almost two years. So that was a long time to be suffering with that pain. But the Lord is faithful. I took the bless cloth and put it in water and then placed it on my back for a few minutes and started asking for God's divine power of healing. Something strange happened. The burning that used to be there disappeared completely. So God moved. I am now healed and have regained my normal health. Glory be to God. Since I have started watching your television program, I've been praying for God to give me a chance to attend your ministry. God bless you. Well, that shows in that testimony, God has the cure for everything, even that which man does not have the cure for. Yes, it's wonderful how God can move That's for right. any condition. Well, here's a person writing from Swaziland, and God really moved for this person. Dear Reverend Angeli and servants of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, I herewith send you my greetings and good news from Swaziland. After your miracle crusade, I wrote a letter to you about my addiction to cocaine and my alcohol problem. It is history. Praise God. Yes, praise God. I am reading, untying God's hands now for the third time. So he's devouring that book. Sounds like it. 
I am serving the Lord now and going to church. I owe God my life. Jesus truly saved me. May God bless and give you all many more years. Thank you for everything. Jesus is the answer. Oh, indeed he is. And you know, that's a powerful book Reverend Angeli put out, Untying God's Hands. And people don't realize that it's not only sinners that tie the hands of God, but Christians can tie, can tie his hands as well. Mm -hmm. And friend, at this time, I want to offer you Reverend Angeli's book, Untying God's Hands. Oh, what a powerful study this is. Throughout this book, you will learn what ties God's hands and what unties his hands. And throughout the book, there is scripture confirming it all. Now watch this special video on his book, Untying God's Hands. Untying God's Hands is a must read for everyone who wants a closer walk with God in this last hour. With amazing frankness, Reverend Angeli deals with many controversial subjects that relate to every aspect of our lives. Dating, sex, homosexuality, the ministry of angels, the Holy Spirit baptism, and more. This book gives you the answers you need to be victorious in this end time journey so that God and his promises can become living reality to you. Again, friend, I encourage you to get this book, Untying God's Hands. Now, for more information about the book and donation prices, go to ernestangely.org. And remember, it's also available as an ebook as well. And now it's back to Kathy Millar with more testimonies. Kathy? Well, Reverend Mockamer, I have a, a short letter from a woman who wrote from Zambia, Central Africa, and she was really delivered through our literature. And Good. our literature is such a blessing to so many people because it's full of the Word of God, and it just opens up the Bible to them. Yes. And through the literature, she was set free, and she writes, Dear Reverend Angeli, first of all, I am thanking your ministry for giving me a lot of encouragement to know the true God and the Savior, Jesus Christ. I was at one time at a point of committing suicide, but when I started receiving your letters, books, tracts, and blessed cloth, I have been encouraged to live. I'm very healthy and I haven't been sick. Yours in Christ. Well, that says it all. Yes. God did a great work in her life. Absolutely. And it was through the literature that she realized I need to live. Yes. God wants me to live. And our partners that stand by with their financial support, they help print that literature, which we distribute all over the world. Yes. And there are lives changing, as Absolutely. you said, and that's proof in that letter. Yes, so this is a life saved <laughs> in more ways than one. That's right. Well, here's a man who's writing from Zambia, and he writes, Dear Reverend Angeli, Jesus is wonderful. Greetings to you in Jesus' name. A while ago, I submitted a prayer request for my wife and daughter who fell sick. I wrote to you with a believing heart asking for prayers and the power of the Holy Ghost magazine. I received two blessed cloths and a wonderful letter from you. Upon receiving these items, the situation at home changed tremendously. So he saw the results right away. While believing Jesus for a miracle of healing, I pinned one blessed cloth on my wife and the other one on my daughter who had developed a rash on her body. While I was praying with faith, I received a miracle and my wife was also healed. That's great. So he received a miracle for himself as well. Good. I gave my daughter who developed the rash on her body water that I placed the blessed cloth in and prayed believing God for a miracle and the rash disappeared. God did it. Isn't that awesome? Indeed, all things are possible with God to those who believe. I thank God for the blessed cloth as a point of contact. Your magazines are so powerful that I was encouraged to go to Bible school and take a ministry development course. I have started two house churches within the town and miracles and healings are happening. Miracles are real in Jesus name and I wish to join the World Outreach 90 and 9 Club. 
yours because of Christ Jesus. Well, miracles and healings raise up witnesses. And the Lord's making a witness out of that individual. Yes, praise God. Two house churches and it was yes. all inspired through this ministry. And yeah. those miracles that took place in his home, now he can testify to others how God has moved for his family. And it's working because they're having miracles and healings in their churches. Yes, it's wonderful. Well, here's a letter from a man writing from Kenya, Africa. And he writes, Dear Reverend Angeli, Greetings in Jesus' name. I am the fifth generation born into a family of sorcerers and people who practice witchcraft. So it runs in their family. The first generation forefather who was founder of our village obtained the land where our village is located demonically. Ever since the beginning, those in our family who have gotten saved from the first to the fourth generations have backslidden and died without Christ, which is really sad. That is. Given into the sins that our village was built on, which is witchcraft, sorcery, adultery, fornication, pride, jealousy, and animosity. So imagine what it's like in that village. All the devil's works, yep. all death. Yep. In my generation, there are three of us who are now standing for Christ. It is only by the grace of God that we are standing for him after backsliding in one way or another in the past. So they were a part of that cycle. Mm -hmm. Personally, I was being attacked by the devil with great condemnation, only to be helped by God's grace when I came to encounter one of your anointed Power the Holy Ghost magazines called Valleys given to me by a friend. So praise God. That's a good friend. Yes, that's a good friend who was able to give him that magazine and it, it just helped him in such a tremendous way. After reading it, I came to the realization that after all I've done, Christ still needs me. I've decided to serve Jesus with all my strength and win souls for him, beginning with our village and beyond as the Holy Ghost leads me. I am praying to God to enable me to be completely loyal to him and to live holy the rest of my life. And that's key. That to is. To live holy. You can't go back to that old lifestyle. Thank you for your service to the Lord. May God richly bless you. By living holy, God's grace will continue to abound and help him. Yes, absolutely. Well, I have a letter here from a woman who was delivered from fear and she's writing from Zambia, Africa. And she writes, Dear Reverend Angeli, I am writing in love with great gratitude for your kind letters of advice. I am happy because it's through your letters that I am saved today. So just through the letters, she received salvation. Jesus Christ died so that we could experience freedom in every area of life. And that includes freedom from fear. There were many times year, years ago when I felt something was wrong but I couldn't identify it. When I would ask the Lord what was going on, he would answer me, fear. And sure enough, I realized I was experiencing tormenting fear in my life. At that time, I did not realize that I could take a bold stand against the spirit of fear. So as a result, I suffered from many fears, the fear of rejection, the fear of man, the fear of never being loved and other fears. I finally came to the conclusion that the fear would not go until I took action. So I wrote to you concerning my fears. You responded back to me and said, let's go to God in prayer concerning your fears and agree together in faith, nothing doubting for God to move. I have learned through your teachings to confront fear that God cannot work through fear, but if I use faith, God can work. The more rooted and grounded I became in God's word, the easier it became for me to attack fear with boldness through the power of the Holy Spirit. This was a turning point in my life, and I am now determined to live courageously, boldly, and with confidence. I thank God for your understanding, and I thank you for standing with me in prayer over the years. Your friendship and support means so much. My brother and I love you so much and continually pray for you. 
we care about you. <laughs> that is a great lesson in fear yes. people should take note of. Well, thanks for being on the program, Kathy. And now, friend, listen to this next great song and let it bless you in a special way. The Bible says, oh, just leave it in. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujahs. And friend, the Bible says ye must be born again, set free from all sin and unrighteousness if you're going to make it to heaven. Friend, pray with me right now. Not one sin, not one disobedience will ever make it through those gates. That's why Jesus came and spilled divine blood to set you free and give you eternal life and you can receive it right now through this prayer. Say, O oh God, I confess all of my sin before you. Forgive me, Lord, for I have come home, and I will serve you the rest of my life. And I believe the power in the divine blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins, all of my sins. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in. 
And friend, if you meant that prayer, Jesus is yours today, which means you have the healer living within your soul. You have the supply of all your needs living within. So get ready to receive the miracle, the healing that you need right now. Put your hand against mine on the screen. This is a form of laying on of hands, all according to Mark's gospel, the 16th chapter. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring the sick and afflicted to you. God, many today are in great need, looking to you right now for the miracle, the healing that they need in their life. Lay a healing hand upon each one. In the holy blood name of Jesus, heal, heal, heal. Let your blood power flow right now. I curse every sickness and disease. I put it under the blood. God, through your son's blood stripes, they are made whole. And Lord, make them a witness for you in this final hour. In the blood name of Jesus, I pray, and amen. Now, friend, you watch every improvement. You give God the honor, the praise, and the glory. And friend, if you received a miracle or a healing through this Jesus ministry, maybe a friend or a loved one has, or you would like to tell us about how the program is a blessing to you, send us an email of your testimony. You can send that email to testimonies at ernestangely.org. Or you can always mail in your testimony you can mail it to Ernest Angley Ministries, P.O. Box 1790, Akron, Ohio, 44309. And friend, you who sponsor this Jesus ministry, don't forget about the power of the Holy Ghost magazine. Now you can read this edition at ernestangley.org for free. And the theme of this edition is, How Does God See You? This is a mighty message by the Reverend Ernest Angley. Also in this edition, you'll find many testimonies from around the world of how God is moving and working through this Jesus ministry. And I'd like to invite you to be with us in our services this coming weekend at Ernest Angley's Grace Cathedral for powerful services every weekend in two locations. We are located in Cuyahoga Falls at 2700 State Road and in Akron at 1055 Canton Road in Springfield Township. Oh, friend, these services will be a great blessing to you. You don't have to be a member of Grace Cathedral to be in our services. You're always welcome to worship the Lord with us. And always remember, you are special to God. You can enroll in the Ernest Angley Ministries Online Bible College. It's open to everyone, and you can work at your own pace. Being trained in God's great truths will make your life prosper in the Lord and enable you to be a great blessing to your friends, family, and those in great need. Go to ernestangley.org and start today. This program is paid for by the Ernest Angley Outreach Partners.